So you want to start living in Egypt, maybe start living in Luxor. If you're a foreign expat looking to learn how to get your resident visa, stick around because you can learn a lot from my big mistake. In this new episode of my Living in Luxor vlog series, where I'm going to show you exactly what not to do. And then I'll come back at the end with a few practical tips for what you should do. Welcome back everybody. Today is the big day that we have to go and get our residency visa, which will allow us to continue living in Luxor for another six months. We have to bring our passports our rental agreement and copies of our PCR test that we needed to enter Egypt with us. Now we are headed over to the East Bank into Luxor to see the Department of Tourism in order to get our visas approved and paid for. I have no idea how much this is going to cost. We will find out when we get there. We have our translator with us and our driver Saeed is now bringing us there. We're just about to cross the bridge over the Nile. Easier than this. They're going to make another bridge over there? Yes. This is the make bridge. I think the most we can do is six months at a time. Yeah, six times, six months is good. Yeah. I found some bark somewhere there, you know? Okay, we go with him or wait yeah, for we you? Go with him. We go with him. It's him. you got all the paperwork. So I forgot my mask. Trinity and Karina have theirs, so I'm using my scarf instead. Something that wouldn't be able to do in the States with all the strict restrictions here in Egypt things are a little more lax but <coughs> this will suffice we're just in line now waiting so it's 11 a.m. we have to come back at 2 o'clock so yeah, we're just outside waiting now for our driver to come back. Saeed, he should be here any minute. Uh, so yeah, it appears that we, we left our passports here at the passport office. They have to take them and make photocopies, get everything prepared, and then we have to come back at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which is about four hours from now. And hopefully we can have the process finalized. We'll see. Okay, so yeah, then it'll be better for me to just, we'll, we'll do some grocery shopping, El Raya. We'll go to the West Bank. You'll drop us off, then I'll come back. I'll take the motorboat across. Yes, it's more easier. And it's easier that way. And if you want to take taxi, give him 50 pounds, they'll bring you where's the office. From the West Bank? No. No, from no, the from thing, Luxor. From Luxor, yeah. yeah. I could just yeah. walk. You, and you walk just half a kilometers, man. Yeah. So now we are just going to get some grocery shopping done while we wait. We're here at El Rayo, which is one of the supermarkets here on the east side that seems to cater more to the tourists and expats. So Karina is just going to grab a shopping cart and head in and we're going to do some shopping.
my eggs here, have a little help carrying groceries to the car. Pretty much have everything we need now. Let's see what it costs us. $17.94. That has to be $1,794, probably about $118 US dollars. Yeah, because uh, different accent. Yeah, because I speak Spanish too, and yeah. I, I sp <laughs> that was my first language is Spanish. So in English, I always mispronounce stuff too, and <laughs> so I keep on telling him some uh, our A's are different. So. Oh, the car. Harabea. Yeah, Harabea. Harabea car. Uh, the road is shy, shy. Shada. Shada. Yes. Shada. Shada. Harabea and the Shada. Yes. Car on the road. Kubri. Bridge. Kubri is bridge. Yes. Here you can see children pulling sugar cane from the sugar cane truck. Okay, so I'm now back home. We went out to try to get the passports. Typical Egyptian style. It's delayed for some unexpected reason. It seems like they have to take our passports and probably make copies and do something with them, but they told us to come back after 2 p.m. So now I'm back here in the West Bank. We are going grocery shopping at El Raya, brought back our groceries with our driver. Now I'm going to walk from my home down to where the boats are on the West Bank of the Nile, take a river boat across to the East Bank to the Winter Palace, and then I will try to find the passport office from the Winter Palace by using GPS. So we still have quite an adventure to go. So we're just locking up the door here. At our home here in Luxor on the West Bank in Bayrat. So I just have to walk through the village now, which is going to be probably about a 10 minute walk So I'm just gonna walk down this road here and we're going to cut through the village. We'll go through a residential area where you see a lot of the locals. And then from there, we'll get onto the main street where you start to see more tourists and expats. Not a heavy concentration, but they are here in Luxor. So that's my home in the distance over there. And as you can see, I still got a ways to go down the road here.
stopping in here real quick to exchange some money. This is in the village. Do a quick exchange of US currency into Egyptian pounds. I have 400 US dollars. So just finished exchanging money. You can see the businessman services behind me. Exchange 400 USD for 6,200 some Egyptian. They have to make that money on it too, but it's very close in comparison to the standard currency rate minus a few dollars for the service. So now we're just gonna continue down to the Nile, which is right down this way. And we'll take a boat across to the East Bank. And if you get hungry, there's always a lot of options along the way. You see the nice french fries for all the Americans. To mom, alhamdulillah. Later. There's a pet store here if you have a pet. I have one. Say hi, Jackie. Cat food, dog food, and other items. Africa behind me is another good place to eat, or so I hear. I have not been there yet, but uh, I do hear that it has very good food. So now we're almost here by the boat guys. One of them will surely come over and offer their services. They may try to charge 40 or 35, but the standard price is about 30 Egyptian, which is around $1.50 US to go across the Nile from the West Bank to the East Bank. That's where we're headed now. Any minute now, one of these guys will ask for a boat. 30 Egyptian to Winter Palace. Shokran. Alhamdulillah. So now we're just gonna get onto the boat, gonna watch my head going on. And a lot of times you'll cross boats like this. Hey, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Nah, nah, it's okay. It's good. So we're just crossing the boats now. A lot of times you'll do this to get across to the boat that's gonna take you out. We're going across a series of these. And that's it. Shukran. One more. temple behind me in the distance there wow. that's all part of the Luxor temple we're gonna go further down to the Winter Palace and then make our way walking downtown to the passport office <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
the east bank of the River Nile. I live over there on the west bank on the other side in Bayrat, but we're here in the main village of Luxor and I have Captain Cook behind me here. So now we're gonna head over to passport office. As you can see, most of local Egyptians are very friendly. Where's Captain Cook? Captain Cook. Yeah, that's just my boat here. That's his boat. You hope you have enjoyed. It's the real Captain Cook. Nice to see you. Shokran. Welcome the land. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Alaska. Have a good day. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Shokran, to mom, same with you. Thank you. Thank you. You can see there's a little more traffic here on the east side. Obviously, there's a lot more tourism here. This is where some of the more famous hotels are. You have the Luxor Temple and Karnak on this side. This is the side of the living, the land of the living, as opposed to the west bank of the Nile, which is the land of the dead, where, where the ancient Egyptians would go to west and where you have the final resting places, such as the uh, tombs at the Valley of the Kings and the various mortuary temples that they have there. Let's continue on our way the passport office so we have about a 15 minute walk before we get there I'm just gonna take a little video here of a landmark so I remember coming back where to get on the dock to get the boat that brought me across because there's multiple uh, boating docks along the way I just want to make sure I get the right one where they're waiting for me to return <laughs> As you can see, I'm walking in the street. When in Egypt, do what the Egyptians do, walk like an Egyptian. You'll notice many of the locals here just walk in the street and there seems to be a natural rhythm. There just seems to be a natural rhythm where everyone knows how to maneuver around everyone else. It's In half a mile, the destination is on your right. So we are almost there, just a few more minutes, and we should be at the passport office. So that's it, very easy. I have my updated visa here. As you can see, I have residence until 6-2-2022. At that time, I will have to come back and re-up for another six months as I work toward residency here in Egypt. So that's it. That's a bit of a relief. I'm surprised I didn't have to pay anything at all. I didn't quite understand that. I was told uh, by our translator that it would probably be about um, 1,700 Egyptian, which is a little over $100 per person and that I may get a discount for my daughter, but apparently I didn't have to pay anything. They told me I was all set, free to go, and my passport is stamped. All three of us, we are good for another six months here, living in Luxor. Only that we weren't good for another six months. Wait for it. Wait for it. stop right there 
because it wasn't exactly that easy when we first got our passport stamped for the visa. You see, the stamp read resident till 6-2-2022. So as an American expat, I'm reading and thinking this says resident till 6 being June 2nd, 2022. However, in Arabic, the day comes first and then the month and then the year. And this was a valuable lesson for me. Clearly, I have to take full responsibility here. I admit that I was wrong. I made a mistake. And that was, you know, my limited understanding coming into Egypt. So I'm learning from that mistake. And I'm hoping other American expats or people seeking residency in Egypt can learn from my mistake because it can become very costly as my wife tried to leave the country and, you know, had to basically pay a fine. And then coming back, we had to reestablish all over again the entire process of our residency which required taking photos and getting the residency card and you know getting a certified copy of our rental agreement with the landlord established in the court system it's quite a lengthy process that took time and a lot of money so i hope you learned something in this video if you're someone interested in establishing residency here in egypt living in luxor that you understand that the process to apply for your resident visa is a multi-layered process. There's several stages to it. And that in Arabic, the, the day comes before the month and then the year in sequential order for a date, which is different than we're accustomed to in the state. So you don't wanna make mistakes there. And of course, it's best that if you hire a translator or uh, you know an intermediary to go between you and the passport office, which is a good idea, that it is someone that can explain and consult on the entire process to you. So you wanna go ahead and take full responsibility for your own actions. Take initiative by asking your representative, that is the person who comes between you and the passport office, the intermediary, and inquire with them about every step of the process, every aspect from beginning to end, and all the costs that are associated with each stage along the way. This way, there's no surprises. And just remember that here in Egypt, this is especially important for the American expats who are used to writing in reverse, but here in Egypt, the sequential order starts with the day, then the month, then the year. So that you don't make the same mistake that I did. Save yourself time and money. I hope you learned something from this video. If you didn't, I at least hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and give it a like and leave a comment down below with any questions that you may have about obtaining a resident visa here in Egypt, especially if you wanna be living in Luxor. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and give it a like and please remember to click the bell icon for future updates. This is NEXT. Living in Luxor. Peace out, everybody.